This is the Stratomatic Baseball Excel 1973 Carryover League. Brought to you by the Shrimp Trawler YouTube channel. Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 7073 Carryover League. We are in the second round of the postseason tournament, looking at teams trying to make it into the third round in the National League. We've seen a couple get uh, forward and waiting patiently to see who they will match up with in the third round. When we take a look at the tournament here and the five game eliminations where the third place teams are playing the second place teams. Pittsburgh, who actually was an underdog, believe it or not, uh, beat the Rockies, so they are game number 500. Giants and Braves played. Braves won three games to one. They're two over 500. Now we'll have a series between Arizona and St. Louis. Winner of this series will obviously be above 500, and which leaves only the Astros and Marlins to play to see who the final four are playing for wild card spots. Um, in this series. Arizona, and the last time we saw them, uh, they split eight games with the lowly Portland team and had to come down 4-1 to do it by winning three in a row. So they came in on kind of a winning streak at the end there and pretty you know, remarkable to win three straight facing elimination three straight times, and they did it. So that's good news for Arizona, but they have a better opponent, of course, the St. Louis Cardinals. The series opens up in St. Louis. Game one, it is Chuck Dobson for Arizona against Bob Gibson, of course, at the top of the Cardinal rotation. And in the first inning, uh, I guess you have a rusty Bob Gibson, perhaps. He gives up a couple runs, uh, sends eight batters to the plate. It would be all he would give up, those two runs. And by the fourth inning, the Cardinals, as they are tend to do, string a bunch of singles together. Five straight singles gives you three more runs. Unfortunately, three more singles in the fifth gives you nothing, so there's still just three runs on eight singles. But they get a two-run homer by Bill Sadakis in the sixth, and they unload on the Jerry Bell in the bullpen in the seventh. This is an easy 8-2 win for the Cardinals in game one. Game number two. Uh, we have Chris Short the number five starter because Arizona's series against Portland lasted so long they have nobody uh, none of the top four pitchers have enough rest so they have to go to their number five starter Chris Short against Rick Wise for the Cardinals and this game is similar to the game we just played in game one bunch of singles for the Cardinals again <laughs> they hit a lot of those don't they folks 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 singles and a couple doubles. It is a 12-3 route. The suddenly red-hot St. Louis Cardinals, a team before the All-Star break, they would um, beat up on the Pittsburgh Pirates, beating them four straight. Then in the first round of this tournament, they had to play the Reds, and they played respectably. They split four games against the Reds, but did not uh, get first place. So they uh, were 6-2. and two. They're 8-2. and two. They've won eight of their last ten games. Have these Cardinals in this particular timeline of 1970 to 1973. It is not their heyday, of course. But it would certainly be pretty cool if uh, the Joe Torrey and the Lou Brock and the Bob Gibson-led Cardinals could make some hay this year. And that's what they're doing. Good for them. Good for the Cardinals. They've had a bad draw in a lot of these drafts. And uh, as the other teams in their division get better and they get worse, so it's about time they turn the screws. They get kind of a cupcake here in Arizona uh, as we go to a game three. There's one other thing that the Arizona Diamondbacks are playing for, and this is kind of shady. This is the tanking part, the tanking side of the league. Uh, the 
Commissioner Award for roster participation is currently led by the Colorado Rockies. Arizona is about 100 points behind. Let's take a peek at it just to show you in the stats. The Commissioner Award um, uh, is a factor of innings pitched by the least used pitcher and at bats the least used hitter and that factor is a number the team with the highest factor gets an extra draft pick and right now Colorado has that factor at 1302 and today Arizona facing elimination their factor is 1199 they got to pick up 103 points in commissioner award usage by using their bench players in their bullpen to surpass Colorado for a potential draft pick compensatory draft pick in the draft and so the eyes are rolling in Colorado as is Arizona trying to beat the Cardinals win the series or are they just gonna are they simply trying to play their bench players so we have that to look forward to so in in game three in Arizona they had to win three straight against Portland they have to do the same thing against St. Louis in game three it is Danny Combs for the Cardinals acquired in that offseason move where Holtzman ended up on Oakland San Diego sent Combs to the A's and the A's sent Combs to the Cardinals and Jim Willoughby, we saw him a couple times on YouTube already with this really fascinating card as a righty who gets lefties out. And the Cardinals have put their lefties on the bench accordingly. Let's get started from Joshua Tree. We got Graham Parsons and the Fallen Angels serenading us in the background. Lou Brock leads off for St. Louis. 2-7 is a base hit. And we got a plus something arm of Ed Herman. Plus two armor Herman, you know Brock's taken off, and this is going to be close, folks. A 17, let's see. 17, 18, 19, not that close. He's in there. Wow. 1 of 16, he's safe. Dwayne Anderson, the DH today. 64 off Willoughby. Bouncer to third. This is George Thomas, a 40, 37 at third base. That's going to be a base hit and an RBI. And the cards have a lead. Jose Ortiz, acquired from the Cubs in the offseason. Grounds a short. Fielder's choice. So we have a runner at first for Joe Torre. 6'10, skies it in the center. This is Don Hahn, a 2 e 10 in center field. He makes the catch. Call a fly ball A. Runner second with two outs for Simba. Ted Simmons bounces it back to the mound. Will it be a 2 e 16 pitcher? Makes the play. So the Cardinals get a run. Lead one zip. It is Brock Davis leading off for the Diamondbacks. 58, bouncer to second. Julian and Javier, 218 second baseman, but that's going to be a single. Davis is a sea stealer. He'll hold at first. Don Hahn, 410, center X. This is Mr. Adolfo Phillips, and former Expo. Cardinals got 3E7. And center makes the catch. You see, the Cardinals have had to fine guys from other systems. So we know Brock, Dwayne Anderson was a Cardinal, Otis was a Cub, we know Torrey and Simmons, Phil's the next bow, we know Javier, Tyson was a rookie in 73, Beauchamp played for a bunch of teams, Sadak has played for the Dodgers, Berta was a pinch hitter, Gosger was an expo. Fortunately, we do have Gibson and Wise, and we went out and got Combs and Simpson, Chuck Taylor was a Cardinal, and Al Roboski, of course, was a Cardinal, and they went out and got Barber and Abernathy. So they've had to They've lost a lot of their traditional Cardinal players in this timeline. They had to go elsewhere and find guys. Sometimes it's worked, sometimes it hasn't. It's working right now. They're a game away from advancing in the tournament. Chris Arnold, 1-7, is a base hit. Two on. One out for Roger Freed, 57 is a K. And with two outs, George Thomas. 1-8, let's take a look at the George Thomas card. This is what expansion teams get. Those extra player cards that have about 99 at-bats and hit 343 once in a blue moon or every four years or once in four years. And that's all you really need here to help a lousy expansion team get decent. 1-8 is a single to left. So you have Brock Davis. He's a good runner. 16 runner. We'll take on the Ortiz arm and he is in there. We got a 1-1 tie. Chris Arnold does not go to third on the throw. We have first and second with two outs and the lone all-star for the Diamondbacks, Easy Ed Herman. 67 is a strikeout. Top of the second, it's Adolfo Phillips. 
One seven. Homer on a one fly ball. And that's what it is. Javier. Julian Javier with a single. Mike Tyson. 68. Pops the short. And with two outs. Jim Beauchamp. 37 is a K. Beauchamp was a Met in 72. I think he played for the Astros as well. Yeah. Not a good Cardinal team. But they are defying the odds. And they have Bob Gibson. So good for them. Philippe Alou. 66. Lines the first. Stevie Braun, Ray Braun, flies the right. And with two outs, Popovich, 39's a single. Brock Davis, 6'10", bouncer to third. This is Joe Torre, a 3E20 at third base, makes the play. 1-1 one one in the third. It is Lou Brock, 53, rolls to first. Dwayne Anderson, 3'11", rounds the short. Ortiz, 47, is a base hit. And with two outs, Joe Torre, 49, single one of 12, gets it on an 11. Two on, two outs for Simba. 67, lines the second base. Bottom of the third, from Joshua Tree. It is Don Hahn. 69, skies the center. Chris Arnold, 1-4, skies the left. Roger Freed, 1-4 is a K. 1-1 one, one in the fourth, moving briskly along today. Adolfo Phillips. Let's take a look at Adolfo. Nice little interesting card. Um, you know, the Expos had, believe it or not, Boots Day playing center, and they could afford to lose Adolfo, who doesn't have a very long career. And this is a nice little B-stealing three in center field with plenty of on base and power both ways. It's a 238 card, but it has, you know, it's not too bad. Doesn't hit in double plays because he strikes out so much. And he makes a nice little Stratomatic card here. 37 is ball four for Adolfo. Javier. B Steeler. Plus two arm catcher. I smell a hit and run. Hit and run for the Cardinals. And the runner moves up. Runner at second for Mike Tyson. 58 off Willoughby. Skies out. And with two outs, Jim Beauchamp. One. Six is a walk. Two on. Two outs. For Lou Brock, let's take a look at the Hall of Famer. Lou Brock, love this particular card. 71 Brock. Man, him and Tory. 71. Uh, Brock aided Tory getting that MVP because Tory had those 137 RBI. You know, Lou Brock made up a bunch of those RBI. Uh, I love the walks. Won 5, 6, and 7 against righties. And also the 210 single 1 and 19. You got to love that. Because you're always going to hit that when usually you don't on this type of card. But here we go with Lou Brock. Big moment here for the Cardinals looking for a sweep. The pitch to Lou. 66 off Willoughby pops out. Jim Willoughby not having any of it. 1-1, one, one, bottom of the fourth. George Thomas. 1-7, double one, base hit. Two for two today, no surprise. Ed Herman. 1-11, grounds the first and a fielder's choice. Philippe Alou, 2-3. Skies to left field. I want two outs. It's Stevie Ray Braun. 1-8 is a strikeout. Combs Willoughby. Not household names, but they've been pitching well with these particular cards. Into the fifth. It's Dwayne Anderson. 4-2 rolls to the pitcher. Jose Ortiz. 2-8 grounds the third. Joe Torre. 46. Triple 1-6. It's a triple. And he is 2-3. for three. Triple off the Willoughby card. Ted Simmons with two outs and a runner at third. Here's the pitch. 1-3, pops to second base. We go to the bottom of the fifth. But first, let us pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. Okay, bottom of the fifth. It'll be Paul Popovich. 64, the short X. And we have Tyson playing short today, a 3E40. And he kicks that ground ball, does Mike Tyson. Kind of a hole at shortstop until Gary Templeton arrives. It won't be for another th three years or so. Uh, Brock Davis, 110, base hit, dot, dot, and the, and the Diamondbacks have something going on in the fifth inning with runners on the corners. They'll pitch to Don Hahn. 1-7 is a K. They'll bring the infield up with uh, one out. And let's take a look at Chris Arnold. Arnold, uh, a utility player, 
but plenty of on-base percentage and batting average, which is something the Diamondbacks have throughout their lineup. Probably have a higher batting average than the Cardinals do, even though the Cardinals have Joe Torre hitting 363, um, which is pretty interesting. Arnold was benched for his poor defense in the Portland series, and they rallied, but they need a stick in the Cardinal series, and that's why he's here today. Infield up with one out, the pitch to Chris Arnold. 57 to strikeout, and with two outs. It'll be Roger Freed against Danny Combs. 48 is a walk, so here we go, folks. Base is loaded, two outs, and oh my goodness. The ridiculous George Thomas, who's already two for two. 343 hitter. Danny Combs, that's the bear down here. He's pretty good against righties, though. The pitch to George Thomas. 58 is a sky to center field. Diamondbacks get nada. And we have a 1-1 game into the sixth. Great news for Cardinal fans. Adolfo Phillips will lead it off. 58 off Willoughby. Skies to right. Julian Javier, 2-5, rolls to third. And Mike Tyson, 35, bounces to shortstop. Bottom of the sixth. This is Combs' breaking inning. Easy. Ed Herman, 64, bounced to short. Here's Tyson again. This time it's not an error. It's a single. Not a good day to be Mike Tyson. Philippe Alou is the batter. Pitch to Philippe. 6-11 off Combs. Pitcher X. He's an E-0 pitcher. This should be a double play unless the Diamondbacks get extremely lucky and they get a ground ball C. They get extremely lucky. Should have been a double play, but he juggled it getting out of his glove. Had to throw over to first instead. So the runner from first goes to second with one out. For Stevie Ray Braun. 44 off of the Combs card. It's a homer if you got power. And let's take a look at Stevie Ray Braun's card. Yes, as a left-handed batter, he has power against lefties, not against righties. Top break, Danny Combs. That leaves Joshua Tree. A two-run homer here in Joshua Tree Stadium. It is 3-1 Arizona. It'll be Paul Popovich. 1-6 pops a second. Down with two outs. Brock Davis, 34 second. Then the Cardinals come back in this game and get a sweep still. Pretty sluggish, but Jim Willoughby has a lot to do with that sluggishness. He's been fine. The two runs in the first two batters, and then after that, scattering some singles. A triple that was not worked in anything. And we're in the seventh. Jim Beauchamp will lead it off. 47 is a base hit. Now, we, we see I've seen a lot against Willoughby. When teams bench their left-handed hitters because Willoughby's so great against lefties, it also means that they've got some pretty mediocre right-handed hitters in their lineup, and that's why they're not producing. Beauchamp would be one of them. He's reached two out of three times, however, so it has worked a little bit. It'll be Lou Brock, your tie run, who is one for three today. The pitch to Lou. 59 is a sky to center. Dwayne Anderson. 33. Sky's the right. And with two outs, Jose Ortiz. We haven't looked at his card yet, have we? Let's take a peek. Jose Ortiz did not have a long career. As a pinch hitter in 71, he had 295 and 88 plate appearances. He was involved in the Jose Cardinal deal that sent uh, Cardinal from Cleveland to the Cardinals to the Cubs in this carrier league. But he's here. The runner at first and two outs. The pitch to Jose Ortiz. 2-5, grounds to second base. 3-1 affair in Joshua Tree, Diamondback Stadium. We are enjoying in the seventh inning stretch the fine sounds, the complete reprise sessions of Graham Parsons from GP. Some burrito stuff on here. That's all it took. Emmy Lou in the background there. Just about everything you've ever wanted to hear of involving Graham Parsons and the burritos. 48 cuts, 2 hours and 40 minutes. That's a long night at Joshua Tree. Okay, let's get back to the game. Before we get back to the game, let's give it a little bit of... There we go. All right. It'll be Don Hahn. 1-2 hit by the pitch. Chris Arnold. 45 is going to be a double to right field. Han's a 14 runner. Rocks the plus one arm. He'll run on a 15. And he scores on a 12. It's 4-1 Diamondbacks. That breaks Combs. 
Six innings and a couple batters. Did not have it today. Chuck Taylor will come on in the seventh. It'll be Roger Freed. 2-9 is a walk. George Thomas, 58, flies left. Ed Herman, 53, rolls first. Second and third, two outs, Philippe Alou. 56, though, is a base hit in the left field. That will score a run, and Roger Freed will hold up. Runs in the corners, two outs for Stevie Ray Braun. Pops to first base. 5-1 Diamondbacks. A new soft shoe. We'll turn it down a little bit. Let's see. Diamondbacks seem to be in control of this one, folks. They have a 5-1 lead with six outs to get, and Willoughby's been a magnificent. Uh, Diamondbacks can bring a little bit of defense into this game. They have Jim Lytle as a two outfielder. He'll go in for Brock Davis. And Han will go in the left, and Lytle goes to center. They also have Dalton Jones can play a little bit of first base, believe it or not. Actually, they're going to do a full scale. They'll come in for Alou. And you know what? They'll empty the bench and have Popovich. He can play defensively at short. Oh, he's next batter. Never mind. Sorry about that. I saw Casanova over there. All right, five to one. Cardinals. Doesn't look like they're going to get that sweep into the eighth inning here. It'll be Joe Torre. 44 off of Willoughby. That is gone. Solo shot for Joe Torrey. Three for four today. And it's a 5-2 game. And here come the cards in the eighth inning. Ted Simmons, 5-11 is a walk. Willoughby, a batter away from breaking. That's something the Cardinals can hope for and get into this Diamondback pen. It'll be Adolfo Phillips. 59, second C. Runner goes to second for Julian Javier. 46, they did it. Triple, one to six. Single, not that. That's a triple. We got a 5-3 game. Here come the cards. More importantly, that'll do it for Jim Willoughby. Seven and a third. They have five outs to get. Two run lead. Tyron will come to the plate. Tyson, Beauchamp, and Brock. That won't scare a lot of people. I think we'll start this. All those lefties are on the bench. And I think, let's go with Tatum now, knowing that the Cardinals are going to take those lefties off the bench sooner or later. Might as well do it now and not wait till late in the game. So here's Ken Tatum, the closer. Does he stay for all five outs? We're not sure. He's not that great against lefties anymore. Um, he was the Angel closer and went to a few All-Star games for the Angels. He comes on in the eighth. And Tyson is a scheduled batter, and they're going to pull him and get our first crack at a game-tying homer from Bill Sadakis, who's the pinch hitter. Dwayne Anderson will move to shortstop as Tyson's pinch hit for. Bill Sadakis with a runner at third in a 5-3 game and one out. They're playing back. Here's the pitch to Bill Sadakis. 56. Homer, 1-7. to seven, Double, and he missed it. Rolled an 18, but then he attacks tight Tatum's first pitch. Fastball high and in, and he turns on that one. Homer, 1-7. to seven, Double. That'll score a run. It is to 5-4. Sadak is at second. Still just one out. Beauchamp is the scheduled batter. He will leave for Gosger. Jim Gosger. And we're going to let Tatum pitch to him with a tyrant at second and one out. They have back-to-back -back lefties. Daryl Knowles is also in the bullpen, but he got lit up in his last outing. Tatum's just going to have to fight through this. Jim Gosger, runner at second and one out. The pitch to Jim Gosger. 58. It's a bouncer to second base. We have Braun, 83-E34 at second base. And he makes the play. So... Sudeikis advances to third with two outs. And it'll be Lou Brock. You could walk him, put the lead run on the base to face some righties, Dwayne Anderson, Ortiz, and Anderson. And I think they're going to do it. They're going to walk Lou Brock here. 
because T Tatum dominates right-handed batters, and yeah, Anderson, Ortiz, and Torrey are all right-handed, three straight righties, and they're not going to leave the game either. So here is Dwayne Anderson, first and second, two outs in a 5-4 game. The pitch to Dwayne Anderson. 1-9. Let's take a look at the Dwayne Anderson card. He gets it. Triple, 1-2-11, single dot dot. It is a single dot dot. So it ties the game. But does not give him the lead here as Brock is held, has to hold up a third base. A 5-5 tie. Again, the Diamondback bullpen blows up. And you got Jose Ortiz. You'd be tempted to bring in a left-handed pinch hitter, but then that'd bring in Daryl Knowles at that point. So it'll be Ortiz, Tatum, with runners on the corners, and two outs to pitch to Jose Ortiz. 58 off of Tatum is a sky to right. So not the greatest news. Empty the bullpen and put in all their defense, and the Cardinals still came back with four runs in the eighth inning. It is 5-5. Chuck Taylor will continue. He's a long reliever. He's a relief three, seven, starter seven. Bottom of the eighth, it'll be Paul Popovich. 35 grounds the third. Now you have Jim Lytle in the leadoff spot. 2-5. Sky's the center. And with two outs, it's Don Hahn. Don Hahn, 63 off Taylor. Pitcher X, easier pitcher, but you have to roll for it for the road team, and he's out. We go to the ninth. Ken Tatum's a relief three. You might as well. He's your closer. You got Torrey Simmons, Phillips, and Javier. So three of the next four are right-handed. Joe Torrey having a sparkling day. Ignited the rally in the eighth with a homer as a double away from hitting for the cycle for your 1971 NL MVP. And wouldn't it be a fun story if these Cardinals with the MVP, Joe Torrey, actually do more in the playoff realm, where we know they didn't because of the Pirates and so forth, and Willie Stargell and Hank Aaron and so forth. I'd like to see Torrey take this team a little further. Here he is, leading off in the ninth. 55 off of Tatum, triple, one to three, fly ball the rest, and he does not get that triple. He flies the left. Overshot hitting the, for the cycle there. Ted Simmons, 1-6, skies to right, two outs, Adolfo Phillips, 68, pops to second, Tatum settles down nicely in the ninth inning to give the Diamondbacks a chance to walk this thing off in the bottom of the ninth, ninth. Chuck Taylor will pitch his third inning, he's an excellent pitcher, so set the ball to lefties, the only lefty remaining on the bench, after all that defensive substitution is Casanova, who's right-handed. So you got three straight righties and nothing you can do about it. So Taylor will continue. Once you get past George Thomas, we'll have a lefty like Al Roboski face Ed Herman, if it comes to that. Chris Arnold leading off. 68 pops to third. Roger Freed, 2-9 is a walk. George Thomas, 66, single 1-12 to 12, is a base hit. You got two on with one out, and Ed Herman's the batter. And that'll do it for Chuck Taylor. He has pitched... Two and a third innings. But well, the dangerous Ed Herman is up. And they we're going to turn this thing over to the best the Cardinals have. It is Al Robowski. Rookies, well, his first year, we have a 73 card in play. Uh, as it was better than his rookie card in previous years. So here's Al Robowski in the ninth, trying to keep this game close. Yeah, first and second with one out, and it's easy Ed Herman. Let's take a look at the Herman card. He was their all-star, destroys right-handed pitching. He's still okay against left-handed left -handed pitching. And Al Robowski's pretty balanced, lefties, righties. So here we are, first and second one out, the pitch to Ed Herman. 59 off of Al is short X, oh boy. We started with Tyson, who gave up a single and an error, and now we have Dwayne Anderson, who's a 4E34 at short. And there it is, a single through the four shortstop to walk the game off. Well, we know how to beat the Cardinals, folks. Hit the ball to shortstop. They have Mike Tyson, a 3E40, and Dwayne Anderson, a 4E34. They would give up an error, a single, and a single in this game. And the Diamondbacks would end up winning it. Six to five. Tough break 
for those cards who rallied, but it fell short, ultimately. Ken Tatum gets a win after blowing the save. And Diamondbacks live another day. This is a slippery team. We saw this team win three straight with their backs against the wall. Now they're one four straight facing elimination. Tatum gets the win, inning in two thirds. Gave up the double to Sadakis. You have two hits, a run, and a walk. The rest is Willoughby. Seven to third inning, he gave up nine hits and four runs. Uh, everything was earned, three walks and a strikeout. Rabalski gave up that hit, but it was this defense that was responsible for that hit. So Chuck Taylor takes the loss, unfortunately. Two hits, a run, and a walk, and a, uh, or one hit, a run, and a walk. And then he came in in the seventh to face Roger Freed. Gave up just a hit and a walk in that inning. Combs, nine hits, five runs. One, two, three, four, five. All were earned. Two walks, six strikeouts. One, double, oh, nine, oh, one, oh, eight, and a third. Six, twelve, five, eleven. 5-11-4-1-4-6. Pretty balanced game, each team. Cardinals put 15 men on base. Diamondbacks put 16 on. And 1-0-9-0-1-0-8 and a third. 6-12-11-5. 4-1-4-6. 6 12 11 5 4 one diamondbacks have won another baseball game. And there's some cheering in Pittsburgh and in Atlanta as they don't want to see the Cardinals run away from the in the wild card chase. And the Diamondbacks have reeled them in a little bit with this victory. The best the Cardinals can do is tie the Braves at two over 500. Worst case in advancing, the Cardinals would tie the Pirates at a single game over 500. Let's look at the year to date for the two squads. They are a game apart now, they should be. There they are. So yeah, the Cardinals are game over. Diamondbacks a game under. The Diamondbacks win game four. Both teams will be back at 500 with game five being the tie-breaking game five in St. Louis. Winner advances, loser eliminated. And the Diamondbacks, their commissioner award points have crept up to 1,240. They're only 60 points behind Colorado now. So it was a win-win. They won the game, and they still kept their chances of getting the Commissioner Award alive in a tanking effort, if you want to consider it, consider that. The 17-16 Cardinals are led, of course, by Bob Gibson. Uh, Combs, that wasn't, well, he we got no decision, but he had been 4-1 to that point. Rabowski, interesting, uh, he didn't lose that game, of course. He gave up that hit. Al Robowski, though, does have two losses this year and has given up one earned run. Figure that one out, folks. Gave up an unearned run to lose and a, and a yeah. He's been outstanding. Uh, Chuck Taylor's been outstanding, too. Four runs in 17 innings, even though he just absorbed a loss. Cardinals don't have a lot of home runs, unless the guy's name is Joe Torrey. Or Bill Sedak, excuse me. Sedak is 11 homer, 28 RBI. Torrey, uh, 6 homer, 20 RBI. Torrey's 43 for 138 with that card. That's hitting 312. A little disappointing. More than a little bit disappointing. The card should hit 363 or abouts. He's 50 points beneath it in 138 at bats. So, there's more room to improve for Joe and the Cardinals. And hopefully, they can finish off the Diamondbacks in Game 4 for you traditionalists. And when we look at the year to date numbers. We have played 569 games, hitting 263 with a 391 ERA. We will post the results of Game 4 and Game 5 back in St. Louis if necessary. You've got mail. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next time. Well, baseball fans, we had some drama, folks. Uh, this is the box score of the, uh, the game you just saw, the Diamondbacks winning 6-5 to five in Game 3. So let's take a look at what happened in Game number 4 in uh, Arizona. Bob Gibson on the mound against Reggie Cleveland. It starts off with the Cardinals getting a two-run homer by Joe Torrey, and we're thinking, can Bob Gibson make those two runs stand up? 
Well, when Bob uh, Gibson got off the plane, went back to his hotel, got some bad hotel food, because when he came out to pitch today, he gave up a single, a double, a walk, double, double, single in the first inning. What is going on here to the Hall of Famer? Arizona, 5-2 early lead. Gibson struggling, stays in the game. A two-run homer to all-star Ed Herman in the fourth. And it's 7-2. Another home run by Jim Lytle in the fourth. 11 runs. There's some unearned runs here. Four of them are unearned. But 11 runs off of Bob Gibson. Something clearly wrong. He leaves after just five innings. Uh, it's a 13-5 final. Arizona, you cannot knock this team out. They have faced elimination now five times and won every time. One in Arizona, one in Arizona, one in Portland, one in Arizona, one in Arizona. Five straight fending off elimination games. Courageous Arizona team thus far. They also won a game this year in which three of their starters got injured in the first three innings. They had to empty their bench with guys who didn't even have hits on their card. Won that game. That was broadcast on YouTube earlier in the playlist. If you want to check that out, it was against Colorado. Anyway. We go back to St. Louis for Game 5. And in Game 5, the tired Arizona will go to their fifth different starting pitcher in this series. We saw Chuck Dobson. We saw Chris Short. Jim Willoughby. Reggie Cleveland just beat Gibson. And now we have Juan Pizarro against Rick Wise pitching on short rest for the Cardinals. It is a pitcher's duel. We talked about the defense at shortstop for the Cardinals, Mike Tyson and Dwayne Anderson. In this game, with two men on the fourth, uh, Tyson strikes out. Same thing, bases loaded in the sixth, Tyson delivers a two-run RBI single. So that's good news for the Cardinals shortstop position. They get a 2-0 lead in pivotal game-deciding game five. Top of the seventh, Ed Herman, that all-star. Solo homer, it is a 2-1 game. Stays this way into the eighth. Two on, two outs. Uh, Al Rabowski is brought in. He strikes out Roger Freed. Cardinals just cannot get any more offense going against Jerry Bell. It's a 2-1 game in the ninth. Everybody on the edge of their seat and panicking in St. Louis here. But Al Rabowski gets a ground out by George Thomas. A fly out by Ed Herman, and then with two outs, a ground ball to short X, and everybody's going, here we go again. But Mike Tyson makes a defensive play to win the game. How about that? Good news for the Cardinals shortstop position and the much maligned Mike Tyson. A two-run single in the sixth and a game-fielding play to end it in an elimination game. And yes... It took all of that to finally end the Arizona Diamondbacks season. What a remarkable season they had. Uh, let's take a quick peek again at the stats. Uh, here we have the result. Best of five. Cardinals win three games of two. Cardinals are 18 and 17. Pirates are 19 and 18, but the Cardinals have the tiebreaker in the next round. Arizona, 21 and 22. We talked about the Commissioner Award. Um, could they indeed get the Commissioner Award? And they were creeping up on the Rockies. They got more p participation from Roger Fried and Don Hahn, 70 plate appearances, 22 innings. They get to 1,540 points of Commissioner Award. And that was not from tanking. That was from playing tough baseball coming down 0-2. So give this team some props, this Arizona team. They are leading the Commissioner Award. They won it last year, and they picked up Brock Davis, a 318 hitter. So they will have, at this point, if they win the Commissioner Award, they'll have the 33rd pick in the draft two years in a row. Do the Arizona Diamondbacks, unless somebody in the remaining part of the tournament uh, exceeds that number. That award is finalized before the playoffs. Now the Cardinals, they're 18 and 17. Uh, fought like crazy. Al Raboski did get the big save in the in when it mattered most. Seven saves, 16 innings, only one earned run off of Al Raboski. So he deserves a lot of credit. Uh, Joe Torre, again, got some nice performance there, overcoming a bad performance by Bob Gibson. And 
and uh, that's it. The Cardinals advance. The home team won every game. That's generally not a great portent to figure out how good a, t a team is. I like to look at some road wins to give a team some more merit. But anyway, the Cardinals are advancing in the postseason tournament. Thanks for checking this out. We'll see you next time.